Hi, I'm Sheila from Seaside Snuggles and today I'm going to show you how to make this adorable Christmas postcard that you can actually send through the mail. Um, I did buy sleeves so that I could send it without them being snagged at all, but you can send this through the mail. I do recommend that you go to the post office to mail it because the postage is going to need to be on the inside and you want to make sure that you have the right amount so you can go ahead and get them to weigh it. But um, this is a four by six and it's super cute. Let's get started. That was a pretty fast introduction. I would like to welcome any new viewers to my channel. I hope you'll decide to stay, subscribe, ring the little bell so you can get some future videos from me. They will improve, I promise. <laughs> so here what I'm doing is I am cutting some Pellon Wonder Under number 805 interfacing. Um, it's an adhesive that I will use on the back of my cardstock to complete my postcards. It's 17 inches wide, so I'm able to get four six by four pieces out of there. In my pattern, I include this postcard backing. I printed it using an inkjet printer onto 110 pound cardstock. The reason I used an inkjet printer is because I'm going to be ironing the adhesive onto the back and then ironing that onto the back of my postcards. And laser printer ink is heat activated, so when you iron on it, you may cause it to smear. So I highly recommend using an inkjet printer for these. So I'm just prepping two of the postcard backs. And now those are ready to go, depending on the way you want to make your postcard. So these are the patterns. This is the abbreviated version. I have a full version where each section has the seam allowance on it, but these just have the seam allowance around the outside of the finished pattern. It does have little red reminders to add seam allowance in between. And here where I'm cutting it apart is where you'll need to remember to add the seam allowance. And like I said, there are reminders on there. The next step is to fold along all the stitch lines on your freezer paper. You wanna to fold towards the front of the print. So I'm just using a piece of scrap cardboard to do that. If you don't have a scrap piece of cardboard with a straight edge, then fold it so that you can see the line and then refold it so that the fold is towards the front of the pattern. With paper piece patterns, you are printing or you're sewing the pattern in reverse. So because this pattern is symmetrical, uh, it doesn't really matter. But if you do like one of my flag patterns or something, if it's not symmetrical, it will look like it's backwards. But that's because the block actually comes together with the right side facing away from the pattern. So here I'm gathering up my scraps and determining what pieces of fabric I'm going to use for the tree and the star. So I'm using a pattern fabric for the background fabric. And you'll notice that the pattern runs horizontally and vertically. So you see those dots running horizontally and vertically. As I'm pre-cutting my pieces for each section, I'm trying to keep that pattern oriented the same for all of the sections so that they continue to run horizontally and vertically and don't get skewed diagonally with my placement even though I have some diagonal seams to sew. So I didn't have enough scraps so I had to cut another piece. For all of these background pieces I'm cutting a two inch strip to kind of get me started. 
the individual pieces are finishing at one inch, which means that if you were doing a regular pattern, you would cut it at one and a half inches. But because I'm doing a paper piece pattern and I need a little room to maneuver, I'm doing two inch strips. With the star, the number one piece is going to be the blue background piece. The number two piece is the teeny tiny arms of the star. So I'm trying to cut pieces that will be big enough that I can also use them for the arm and the body. When you iron your first pieces of fabric onto the back of the freezer paper, you want to iron them on with the wrong sides up. Also, make sure that you have a quarter of an inch of fabric all the way around the piece that you're covering for seam allowance. I didn't place this piece correctly, so I'll have to correct it later. If you're using a solid piece of fabric that doesn't have a right side or like a batik or something, then of course it doesn't matter. So using solids for the tree makes things pretty easy. One note about the number of folds for each section. If you have a section that has three pieces, for example, subtract one, you're gonna have two folds. If it's got five pieces, subtract one, you're going to have four folds. And that's just an easy way to keep track of making sure that you get all the folds in in advance. And the good news is once the folds are in, you won't have to do it again for that pattern piece. And you can use these freezer paper pattern pieces quite a few times before they're um, not useful anymore. So here I'm cutting away the excess of piece number one, and then I'm lining up piece number two and pinning that on. Now, all of my tree pieces are solid, so it doesn't matter whether or not they are face up or face down. But here, my number two piece is a pattern piece, and with the paper folded, you want the fabric to be right side up. So you're matching the shape to that folded piece of paper with the fabric right side up. So you see that? When the piece of paper was um, not folded, <laughs> the fabric was wrong side up, but with the piece folded, you want the fabric right side up. And that's going to be for all the pieces after piece number one. So now I have all of my pieces pinned and ready to sew. Let's go to the sewing machine. Notice how my needle is just to the right of the fold. That's how you want to sew all of these pieces. If you inadvertently stitch through the paper, just gently pull it away. If the paper is like completely perforated, you may want to use a piece of tape or something to tape it down. And you might not be able to use that piece again, but you can finish this first iteration, depending on what type of tape you use. If you use heat resistant tape, then you can use it repeatedly, but the fold will be a little thick. So now I am pressing to get the seam sharp. That's what I'll say. <laughs> I'm pressing on the back side or the fabric side. Be careful not to get the hot iron on the shiny side of your freezer paper. Now the Freezer paper doesn't really stick when you iron on the fabric side, so you'll need to iron again on the paper side to get it to adhere. Initially, I was going to press all the seam allowances in, which is something that you can do with freezer paper that you can't do with regular paper. You can't flip or open your seam allowances. 
but I was going to flip these in to kind of make the trees stand up above the background piece. But then I changed my mind and decided to open all of the seams. So you'll see me go back in and open all of these seams before I put on the third pieces. And the reason I'm doing that is because on the star, it's so small that it's important that you open those seams. Otherwise, the seams will all go toward the center of the star and it's just too much bulk. So I don't know if you can see that I'm sneaking the iron in. You want to be careful not to put the heat on the shiny side of the freezer paper. Now I'm going to cut away the excess from my next stitch area, which is between two and three. And that piece of fabric is going to be pinned right side up. So I'm going to fold on that line between parts two and three. Trim a quarter inch away from the fold and then add my next piece of fabric right side up. And I'm just going to continue that with all the rest of the pieces and then we'll go to the machine. I'm opening the seam there. This one's especially important to get that seam opened before you move to the third part because the seams will overlap. On D and E and I think B, um, you're safe to open those seams after the fact. So if you use regular paper instead of freezer paper, you can still go back and open those seams after you get the parts made. See how I'm orienting each piece of fabric underneath the folded section of the pattern piece? So I fold over the pattern piece, I cut that quarter inch seam allowance, and then I can line up the piece underneath with the folded piece. And the piece of fabric that I'm putting underneath is again right side up. That's very important. So we'll get those stitched up the same way. Now the last time I showed um, myself sewing, it was sped up and this is at real speed. So don't feel like you have to go fast, especially when you're just starting with trying to fold, sorry, trying to sew very close to that fold. I'm just finger pressing the piece first, then going in and opening the seam, laying the freezer paper on top of that fold, that open seam allowance, so that it will stick it down. <laughs> Parts B, C, D, and E each only have three parts, so aside from squaring up, they are done. Oh no. If this happens to you, all you need to do is reattach the freezer paper Make sure it's aligned with the seams, iron it back down, and keep on rolling. These stars are so small. I wasn't sure I'd be able to do it, but once I did, I just thought they were so cute. I kind of want to put them on everything. So now we're ready to add piece four. So we need to trim a quarter inch seam allowance and then line up our next piece. Make sure that you have a quarter of an inch all the way around that shape. It's very small, 
but when you unfold it, you want to make sure that you have that quarter inch seam allowance between the two star halves so that you can get a good match and not cut off the tip of the top of your star and make it short. I had a few of them end up a little short. So that's real time. Get that pin out of my way. And we're just repeating the same process. We're going to iron the new piece of fabric over. I will flip them over and open up that seam allowance. Get it as flat as I can. I have quite a few seams coming in that area. And then we have one more piece to sew onto each of these halves. teeny tiny corner inside the legs of the star is what we're working on this time, but it's the same process. Cut your quarter inch seam allowance and then align your fabric right side up so that you have a quarter of an inch all the way around that shape. Let's go to the machine. All right, last one, same thing. Give it a press, open the seam allowance, and press the freezer paper down. The next step in this process is to square up each of our sections remembering to add the quarter inch seam allowance where marked on the pattern. So this pattern is gray around the outside of the pattern where the seam allowance is already included. And then it has a red message on the sides where the seam allowance is not included. If you are going to turn the edge under on your postcards, which I do on another postcard, you might want to add an additional quarter of an inch to the outside. Um, I found that that was easier to turn under than just the quarter inch. So all the pieces look pretty good. Let's get the star put together. I'm using a method where I poke one pin straight through a quarter of an inch away from the edge to line up the pieces of the star. And once I have it where I want it, I will take a second pin and pin across that vertically placed pin. I'm going to do that at the tip of the star and between the legs of the star. A quarter inch is pretty easy to find. It's the edge of your paper. And then where the blue and yellow meet. 
I'm also going to pin together parts B and C and D and E. Those don't require any special alignment. You just want all the edges to meet. So this is very slow and I am sewing so that the needle approaches the pin very slowly. I can want to get it as close as possible before I remove the pin. Now here's parts B and C. Sewing right next to the paper again. If your page has the seam allowance on it when you're doing a paper piece pattern, you might want to take it off first. You can also fold it up a quarter of an inch, but I find that a little tedious. So I just take it off before I sew the sections together if it has the seam allowances still on it. And there's D and E. So I'm continuing with opening the seams, though the paper is left on. Cute. The top of the star is a little bit short, but I still think it's a cutie. I'm opening that seam allowance, and I'll do the same with the DE portion. Now we'll sew the tree together. And then we'll add the star at the top. So all of my footage from sewing is actually from a different time that I put the block together. So here you'll see that the top does not match the tree part of the block and that all of the paper is already removed. So this was the time before I actually drew up the final draft of the pattern. But I did want you to see how the star is sewn to the top. Now I'm just going to press those last two seam allowances open. Now it's all done. I just need to gently remove the paper. And these pieces are ready to go again. So if I wanted to make this pattern again with those pieces, I would start at the point after I fold all of them. So you don't need to refold it. You can just use those pieces again. You may want to use a lint ruler on the back to get any lint off just so it has better adhesion. But other than that, it's ready to go. So what I'm putting on here is Pelix One style number 71F. I'll put this stuff in the description below. It's ultra firm, one-sided fusible. You'll notice that I did not center it. So this was a lesson learned. Fortunately, it was still warm enough for me to peel it off, but use some pins to hold it because it can slide a little bit if you press it too firmly. So just stick some pins in there, start the sticking process, and then remove your pins. And I really like this stuff for these postcards. It adds a little extra firmness in addition to the firmness of the poster board, not poster board, cardstock. So I decided to just do a little quilting. Um, this fusible is pretty stiff, so you don't get a lot of texture from quilting with this, but you do get a little bit. And I just decided to 
outline the tree about an eighth of an inch away and outline the star about a sixteenth of an inch away. And I'm just working my way around both using that center seam between the legs of the star to travel between the tree and the star. So I'm going back down the way I came in and then finishing the right side of the tree. You might consider if you're going to turn the edges, stitching down the edges at this point, even if you're going to do a blanket stitch like you'll see, um, you might find it easier to go ahead and machine stitch that edge under before you do the blanket stitch. Also, though I love the way this turned out, I would probably uh, do it the alternative way that I'm going to show you later, which would be to do my embroidery stitches here and then uh, turn under my edge, adhere it to the cardstock, then use a pin to pre poke some holes for me to blanket stitch around the card, including the cardstock. I made these six pointed designs to represent snowflakes. Um, I'll put a little diagram at the top of my stitch pattern. My husband thought that these were stars, so you know they could be stars or snowflakes, and I'm just making six points, and then I'll go in and add some French knots. And I think I kept it pretty sparse. I didn't want to overwhelm it with stitches. This Peltex One Ultra Firm One Sided Fusible is firm enough for you to embroider without using a hoop if you're comfortable doing that. It's also by Pellon, like the Wonder Under. But I did three of these with the embroidery and just held them in my hand just like that. And that's how it looked at the end. I went around with the blanket stitch. I'm not good at embroidery, I'm just learning but I still think it's very cute. So I thought about sticking the block onto the center of the paper and having it kind of float, um, but then I decided to go ahead and cut it down to the four by six, remove the backing and stick it to the center. And you can see my stitches around the outside of the back a little bit. It's still very cute and it still fits into the four by six sleeve. But alternatively, you can use a ruler, give yourself some uniform holes in the back of your paper, then stick that onto your block, either raw edge cut or turned edge, and then blanket stitch around the outside and I think it looked a little cleaner. So we've completed our postcard and I'm gonna say this is my second one. This is my first one and I was gonna paint on it with some puffy paint and it was my first time using puffy paint and it turned out a hot mess. So I ended up smearing the paint all over and just trying to paint over it like a coloring book. It's not my favorite. But what I wanted to show you is I did my um, blanket stitch around the outside after I did the blanket stitch around the outside of this one. So on this one, I attached the piece to the batting and then I did all of my embroidery, including the backing stitch folding under the edge of the fabric. But you see, it's not a perfect fit with the card, but it still is within the four by six inch limit for this card. This one, I did the blanket stitch after I attached it to the, to the paper and I pre-poked holes in using my ruler so that I could easily get the needle and thread through the post, uh, cardstock, through the cardstock. <laughs>
Uh, anywho, I wanted to show you both of these because I love this one. I think it's adorable, but I wish I had done the blanket stitch around the outside of the card like I did this one. I think it turned out much better. And I will probably make another one, you know, uh, I'll, I'll probably make a lot more of these because I think they're super cute. But that is this Christmas tree postcard that you can send through the mail to your loved ones as an original postcard instead of like the family picture thing or whatever. Or you can incorporate the family picture. Oh, that'd be awesome. Make a quilted postcard with a frame inside with a little family picture. Oh, that'll be cute, right? Anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe. I'd love to have you back with more projects. And I've got one more Christmas project, maybe two, that I'm gonna try to get online before it's too late to make them. Um, I hope you'll join me and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Have a great day.